Okay, guys, for our next review this weekend, it's going to be probably one of our most bonkers ever review. Okay, we're going to be reviewing a TV, but not this TV, all right? So this is my current TV that I own. It's a 58-inch 4K TV, all right? No, it's not this. It's this. Can't even get the whole thing in shot. This is a Sharp 8K 80-inch TV, all right? Check it out. So yes, that is an 80-inch 8K TV from Sharp. It's mind-blowing. All right, yeah, so some time back, actually, Sharp reached out and they said that they asked me whether I would like to review a TV. And I was like, yeah, why not? We haven't reviewed any TVs here at Technobabble. Um, so yeah, I said, go ahead. And, and then they told me what it was. And I was like, uh, okay, I'm not sure if my house has space, but let's try it. And I had an idea of how big it would be, but it wasn't even close to how big it really was when it arrived. Now imagine the TV is really huge, the box is even bigger and it basically filled up my entire corridor, right? Once it was there, no one could walk, walk through. Uh, and by the way, it was so hard to bring it up to my apartment. So special thanks uh, to Sharp's delivery guys who did a really good job to bring it all the way up to my apartment. Uh, special thanks to Jeffrey uh, and Nyam as well from Sharp uh, who basically sat down and went through all the features and answered all the questions that I had throughout this whole month that I had a TV so thank you guys. Now it's not just a TV, it is actually a smart TV, okay? And it's got Android TV built in, which is especially important to me. Now, a lot of other brands, what they do is they, they, it's a smart TV, but they develop their own operating system, which is fine. And most of the time it kind of works well. The problem with that is that if you're like me and I like a huge ecosystem where I can and download as many apps and use as much as I can, um, a lot of developers don't make as many apps for these uh, OS specifically for TVs because there isn't really a market for it and there isn't enough people that would use it. Whereas if you have Android TV built in, the ecosystem is already there. There are thousands of apps that you can use and going through it, it is so smooth. And for me, I use the Nvidia TV uh, Shield, the Nvidia Shield, uh, which is an excellent, I, I still think the best uh, Android box that you can get. So it's basically got the features of that built into the TV already. So you don't need an external device. It also has Chromecast, which makes things a lot easier for you if you want to browse things like YouTube and Netflix and a lot of other features, uh, a lot of other apps. So yeah, it's really a full feature packed TV. Now, other than that, it also supports HDMI CEC and HDMI ARC. I'm not going to go too much into detail about those two, but basically CEC allows you uh, to control other devices that are also HDMI CEC enabled uh, with a single remote. So like for this, this is actually the remote of uh, the Sharp TV. So with the Nvidia Shield, with it being HDMI CEC enabled, I can use this remote to control the Nvidia Shield. And of course, the other one is uh, HDMI ARC, which stands for Audio Return Channel. Um, basically what that is, that if like, for example, Sharp actually gave me uh, a soundbar to test with the TV. And what that allows me to do is, if for example, I had another audio source plugged into the soundbar, I can send it to the TV. The TV will return the audio channel back to the soundbar and play the audio in full Dolby Atmos 5.1. So it's not one of those situations where you can only send out stereo, uh, bring it to the home theater system and then you would do like a virtual 5.1. No, you get the full Dolby Atmos 5.1 all the way into your soundbar. And by the way, the soundbar, it was just meant to be sent over so I can test the TV with good audio and I didn't even intend to do a review, but I was so impressed with it that I'm actually going to keep it on a bit longer. Uh, and thank you, Sharp, for that. So that I can test it again and I'll do a separate review next week. So do remember to press the su subscribe button so that you know uh, when it's up. So yeah, HDMI CEC and ARC are fantastic features uh, and make things a lot easier for you so you don't have to hold a bunch of different remote controls to, to configure different things. Just one remote from Sharp and it controls everything. If, if you didn't have a soundbar or a separate home theater system, another thing that the TV supports is something called Elex Prism, all right? And once again, I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but basically what it does is, it's a very, very cool technology uh, of speakers that are built into the TV. And what it does is, it's not just one of those like tiny speakers at the side of the TV uh, where they're like down firing speakers or at the side and they sound absolutely atrocious. Uh, these speakers are tuned in such a way that they amplify the audio and it makes you sound like it's coming from the front of the TV. 
all right which is absolutely amazing and i would say right now it is the best sounding audio to ever come out from built-in tv speakers now just to clarify things like hdmi cec and arc are not new features all right uh, and even this elex prism uh, it's not brand new technology and I do remember something similar to it being uh, built into an older Sony 4K TV a few years back. Uh, and it was good as well. The problem with that was I realized that when the volume was pretty loud, the TV panel itself will start to vibrate, okay? You don't have the problem here. So I'm sure that they've improved on the technology. And again, I'll say it is the best uh, audio to ever come out of a TV. Now the picture quality of this TV, I mean, before I talk about picture quality, I just want to give you guys an idea of how immense resolution uh, 8K really is. Now, when you jump to 4 to 8, a lot of people have the idea that it is double the resolution of 4K. No, it's not. It is four times the resolution of 4K. So to put things in perspective, 8K is four times the resolution of 4K and 16 times the resolution of full HD, which is crazy. And so you might be wondering like, oh, if I were to play a 1080p video on an 8K screen, it might look really bad. And normally I would say, yes, it will probably look really pixelated, but Sharp actually has one of the best upscaling engines I've ever seen on any TV. Now, with something that massive, not just resolution, but the sheer dimensions of the TV, it would be easy to, to have Full HD look atrocious on that AK screen. But it does a really good job of upscaling um, Full HD videos all the way up to 8K. Now, is it going to look as good as an 8K video? Of course not. That's not how it works. Um, but it does a really, really good job. And then when you talk about 4K videos being upscaled, it looks fantastic. Now, I'm going to show you some footage uh, of, of what the TV can produce with my camera. Now, the problem is I don't have a very good uh, camera for recording TVs or I'm not sure if any camera can re be really good at, at trying to portray the quality of 8K. But let me tell you that whatever you're seeing now is not uh, as good as what you would see in real life. The colors are so vibrant. It is so sharp when you look at 4K and 8K TV. Sharp. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I would say it is probably the best LED TV that I have ever seen. And yes, I said LED, all right? So this TV is not an OLED TV. So for some of you who are not familiar with the difference, basically uh, an LED TV, their pixels can produce color, but they don't illuminate. They require a backlight to shine through the pixels so that you can see what the LED pixels are producing. An OLED TV, which is a newer technology, is different. Every pixel is self-illuminating. And the benefit of that is that you get fantastic contrast. You get fantastic dark blacks and the brightest white between the two because if there are dark spots in that film, the pixels just don't light up. And then for LED TVs, because it's a backlit uh, panel where the light shines through no matter what is being shown on the pixel. So even in dark spot, it's going to look more gray than black. So that's the downfall of LEDs, but they are way more cheaper than OLED. So to solve that problem, what Sharp has done uh, is introduce something called local array dimming. And it's not their proprietary thing and it's not that new. But the great thing about it is that it has 2048 dimming zones. Okay, so basically what it does is the backlit is not one panel. It is one panel, but it's split between LEDs and they would switch on and off depending on the video. Despite being huge, uh, it has a fantastic minimalistic design. It's very sleek despite being that big, which is no mean feat, by the way. And the legs are big, but they are curved in such a way that they sort of add uh, to the design of the, of the TV rather than being an eyesore. But of course, I'm not going to say it's perfect. Although having said that, I cannot think of a single actual problem with it. Um, it has worked flawlessly. I didn't have any, there was a, a small issue that I had at the start, but it turned out that it was actually my shield and not the TV that was the problem. The only thing I will say is that because it's so massive, it's not going to fit on any TV console that any of you have, I'm almost certain. In fact, they have the higher chance that your TV console will fit under the TV, all right? But if it doesn't, then it's just going to be a bad TV. And the problem with that is that now at the back of the TV, it actually has nine HDMI inputs along with its other LAN ports and uh, serial ports and all that. But the reason why it has nine ports is that to transmit 8K footage to that TV, 
it uses four HDMI cables, okay? Four, all right? So each HDMI would transmit one quadrant of that 8K footage. So again, this is not a problem with the TV. It's just my personal thing where I kind of like to hide uh, the cables and make it look neat. Now, what they could have actually done is the legs of the TV, all right, it's really big. So if they found a way to sort of try and like fit the cables in the leg and, and come out at the bottom, I think that would have been absolutely brilliant and it would have looked a lot neater. Okay, so are you ready for the price? Okay, now just to put things in perspective, the most expensive product we've ever reviewed on our channel is the ASUS ROG Mothership. And that was about 10,000 Singapore dollars. The second was also an ASUS laptop that went for 5,000. This TV, all right, this 8K 80 inch TV costs 20,000 Singapore dollars, okay? Yes, you heard me right, 20,000 Singapore dollars. Now, a lot of you are gonna be thinking, that's a crazy amount to pay for a TV. Who's gonna buy that? Now, it's a similar situation, in, in my opinion, to the ROG Mothership, or even the Bugatti Veyron, which is an example that I used in the ASUS ROG Mothership video. And it's, it's basically not meant to be a huge seller, sharp, knows it's not going to be a huge seller. That's really not the point of this TV. Now this TV, like the ASUS ROG Mothership, like the Bugatti Veyron, is really number one, I think a lot to do with R&D. And number two, basically showcasing what Sharp can do. And trust me, to get this TV uh, designed and engineered and to work is no mean feat. And really kudos to Sharp for getting, work, getting it working so well. It is the best TV I have ever had the honor of using and honestly after using this AK TV going back to my 58 inch TV is not going to be fun. Alright so that about wraps up what is probably one of my favorite ever reviews on this channel. Now if you like this video you know what to do and to all my fellow Singaporean viewers out there a very happy national day.